Would you please tell us your name? My name is Jim Campbell. And it's always Jim, never James. Okay. When did you attend Susquehanna? From 1959 to 1963. Okay. And what have you brought to the history harvest today? I really didn't have much, but I brought a picture of a Sealands, the interior of a Sealands Grove shoe factory um, and an invoice for a 1948 Plymouth and a photo of the 1913 Sealands Grove High School basketball team. At the time, Sealands Grove didn't have a gym so the picture was taken on the front steps of what was Susquehanna's gym at the time, a building that burned down in the 1930s. This is the high school football team. Mm -hmm. This is the invoice for the 48 Plymouth. Unfortunately, the mice or somebody got to the paper and we don't know the total cost but there are items on here of extras a rear bumper buffer guard for five dollars and eighty cents a set of seat covers was thirty dollars a Motorola radio was a hundred and five dollars in those days radios and heaters let alone DVD players, were not standard. Okay. And this is the interior of the shoe factory that still exists on uh, North High Street. It's where the law offices of Robert Slavinsky are located, along with several apartments. So is that your own invoice, or is that somebody else's invoice? No, uh, I, I was not able to drive when I was 11 years old. So oh, this, I this is somebody I else's. I didn't make the math, so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that, no problem. How old are each of the items? The basketball team is from 1913. The invoice is June 23rd, 1948. And the interior of the shoe factory is probably right around 1900. How did you come across these items? Beg your pardon? How did you come across these? Um, How did I come across them? I'm somewhat of an amateur historian. I've published uh, four books on Snyder County history, mostly photos, and people knew what I was doing, uh, made their photos available to me. And uh, I get asked a lot of questions about Sealands Grove history. So I guess I'm known as the history guy to some people, <laughs> which is okay. Why did you decide to bring these items to the harvest today? I got a call from Ryan Eck. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a something I live by. I don't volunteer much, but I don't refuse when I'm asked. And he asked me, so I'm here. Oh. And how did you hear about the History Harvest also, Ryan? Ryan approached a friend of mine, Bo Fassold, who was going to be out of town. And Bo asked me if I would do whatever it is that I'm doing today, so I agreed. Do you have a lot more items like this at home? I, I really don't. Uh, the pictures that I used, and I used approximately 300 pictures for each of the four books, so that's 1,200 pictures. Um, mostly they were borrowed from people and were returned. And people will look at the books and say, can I get a print of that? And I say, I'm sorry, but it's not my photo. And to tell you the truth, I don't know who I borrowed it from. I mean, there were so many of them. But uh, people have scanned the photos from the book, and they get what they're looking for in the, in the end. So I guess all is well that ends well. Could you tell us what your favorite, out of all these things that you've compiled that you have to return or anything like that, was there like one special favorite of yours? 
Yeah, the 1953 football team that I played on at Salem Grove High School. This won't mean anything to you, but uh, we beat Sunbury, which is now Shikalimi, the first time we ever beat them. And we had our first winning season in 10 years. It was the second winning season in 18 years. So things were kind of uh, in the doldrums a little bit. and. Uh, we turned it around, and I tell people now, I said, the two words I never thought I'd hear associated with Seals Grove High School football, perennial and power. And uh, that the program at Seals Grove High has been very, very successful for the last 30 years, really. And they were state champions in 2009, and probably that's the last time a public school won a state championship. And it may well be because the Catholic schools who recruit wide, wide areas, in fact, the one Philadelphia team that Seals Grove beat uh, had a dozen kids from New Jersey. <laughs> so Seals Grove may well be the last uh, public school to win the AAA championship. So that's a special picture to me. Yeah, I think it's special, really. It, it really does, I mean. Yeah. Are you going to the game later? I know, am I Are you going to the homecoming game later? I'm oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I saw my first Susquehanna game. I, I grew up in South Jersey. Um, well, if you grow up as a fifth grader. Moved to Seals Grove as a fifth grader. And uh, saw my first Susquehanna game in 1948. So that goes back a while. Amos Alonzo Stagg Jr. and Sr. were the mm -hmm. coaches. And uh, that is that's something that I, I feel Susquehanna really hasn't uh, exploited enough. I mean, uh, Amos Alonzo Stagg Sr. was considered, well, he was referred to as the grand old man of football. He, he was 86 years old when he came here to coach. <laughs> and coached till he was, a, a, I guess he was 100 and died when he was 102. He was born during the Civil War. Wow. <laughs> so uh, it, it's something I think Susquehanna should uh, publicize a lot more than what they do. I mean, they but do have like two huge busts of them, like busts by yes, the Yes, yes, uh, if I can brag a little bit, I wrote the copy that's underneath the busts. Oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanna ask? Is there anything else that you would like to tell us about? Well, the, the thing I've noticed about, uh, I mean, Susquehanna has grown over the years. When I, when I moved to town, uh, they had a president here who thought that the liberal arts college should never exceed 500 enrollment. And, <laughs> yeah. <Whoops. laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it was interesting because he came, like, right before the Depression. Mm -hmm. So the Depression took care of keeping the enrollment down. Nobody could afford college. Then World War II came along, and all the men were off fighting. I think if you look in the in the uh, 1945 Lanthorn, the yearbook, there were like 25 in the graduating class. I think 24 were women, and the one man w had uh, the lower part of his left arm missing. I thought maybe he was a wounded veteran, but I found out later he lost it in a farm accident. So where I think Susquehanna missed the boat was when the GI Bill made college available to everyone. G. Morris Smith still kept the enrollment at 500. And then Gus Weber came in 1959 and he expanded all of the new dorms, um, I don't know what they're referred to now, but the one by the gym and the field hockey field and whatever, uh, they were built. And he, he increased the enrollment from 500 when I was here to 750 by the time I graduated in 63. And eventually it got to 1,000 and now 2,200 now. I'm not. I, I used to say I'm not so sure why you want to go to 2,200. It seemed like 1,500 was what the little schools that were 500 enrollment way back when. Uh, 
you know, capped it at fifteen hundred, and then I thought fifty thousand dollars a year times another thousand students. <laughs> then I know why they yeah. increased the enrollment. <laughs> Let me tell you a little something. Uh, when I was a student here, I worked highway construction in the summer, and I could save enough money to pay for a year of schooling. That sounds really nice. <laughs> yeah. Now. If you guys have a summer job that'll pay for a year of your schooling, I want to do that job 12 months a year. I mean, it's, it's just, the cost of education is just astronomical. And I, I can remember uh, uh, one of my professors, um, my senior year, I needed to borrow $500 by that time the uh, tuition had gone up. And it really bummed me out, because th this was back in like 62, and, you know, hardly anybody was borrowing money to go to school. I mean, you, you either had the money to go or you, you didn't have the money and you didn't go. So I was a little bummed out about it. And I was talking to this professor and he said, Jim, I think you'll see the day when it's impossible to graduate from college without owing $2,000.